What's up YouTube? Jay Kaufman here again. This time a video about the cube. Uh, you know, my first love. Always reef aquariums. I went ahead and went with the Tim's Aquatics uh, fishless cycle. I mean, it's pretty awesome. It, the guy's been around for a long time. He's very smart. Knows a lot of things about certain nitrifying bacteria. So, here's some stuff I picked up from my local fish store. Of course, a nitrite tester, the uh, ammonia to dose, the ammonia test kit, and the waste away. The waste away will be something I'll use later once I get everything kind of balanced in. But uh, tank's been running for about two days, nice and crystal clear. Uh, of course, no lights, no nothing. Aquascape's looking good. Herbie overflow is working great. Uh, everything down here, we got our filter sock still just chilling. We don't want to stop the nitrifying bacteria to do anything retarded the apex core 20 working like a champ um, not ready to do any painting like i said but what we're doing now is pretty much just doing a leak down over the system here uh, to get everything kind of calibrated according to dr tim's that you want to run your temperature a little bit higher than normal when you would with an aquarium when it's ready so here you can see i'm running about 83 82 degrees that's what he recommends uh, I have done this system before with him and it works great as long as you follow it to a T now the biggest thing I found with dr. Tim's is is that if you overdo things for instance like dosing the ammonium chloride a little too much and not really pay attention let it do its thing it can stop the cycle so the first thing we want to do is we want to try to get the cycle as fast as we can. We don't want to slow it down. Uh, I know a lot of people that are new to the hobby are really always in a rush. They, they just want, you know, right now, right now, right now, right now. But the problem with the good reef aquarium is, is that nothing happens fast. And with this cycle here, I'm on day two. I'm going to go ahead and do a test of ammonia just to see. Now... These test kits, if you follow what he says, it's none or less a parts per million deal. It's more along the lines of letting you know, okay, hey, there's something present. The ammonia is present. The nitrite is present. Um, if people want that parts per million, that low stuff. Right now, that's not what you want to do. Uh, I do have the Carib C special grade agronite live sand. I did go with the Real Reef Dry Rock. And when you do this type of setup, you really want the substrate to have a lot of area because Dr. Tim's bacteria loves substrate. It's just like anything else. Nitrifying bacteria loves to be on something that is a substrate. So what you want to do is you don't want to fight off the other type of bacteria that can take over the nitrifying bacteria. I don't know the names off the top of my head, but I do know how to do this cycle and where it works great. So if you follow Dr. Tim's exact deal, you will have a great cycle. Uh, current salinity is at 20 parts per million. Uh, yet when I get ready for the aquarium to be moved and ready to go, I will be running at 35 ppm. This is what I run. Uh, it kind of keeps everything non-diluted, but for the cycle, it will be 20 parts per million and temperature at 83 to 84 degrees. Uh, I will be doing daily tests here every other day, maybe every day, just to see how everything goes. Follow what Dr. Tim states with the nitrite and the ammonia. Um, oops, sorry about that. Uh, but anyway, for you new guys who are trying to cycle a tank quick, this is highly recommended. Uh, I did use the one and only, and the one and only with no fish. You see, there's not a single fish in there, and I won't put one in there until my cycle's finished. But then... Yeah, so once everything's done, I'll give you guys updates, show you some tests, see what happens, go from there. But usually with the Dr. Tim's, I can have a pretty decent cycle within about two weeks, enough to where I can add any type of, we'll say, hardy, LPS, uh, of course, a couple SPS hardies, uh, maybe purple styliforia, something like that, something real hardy, real beginner, maybe some bird's nest like green or a or red maybe some superman stuff like that because that bacteria really needs to kind of find its home now over time i've found 
if you do it this correctly within six months you can have a complete SPS stick tank no problems you can keep an eye on your bacterias uh, a lot of guys are against nitrate testing they say it's non useful it, it, it's not something you need to use I will tell you in the hobby I've been doing this 15 years when you test for nitrite not nitrate this is NO2 if you have a nitrite level we'll just say later down the road there is something going on therefore your ammonia and all that good stuff is not your, your nitrification bacteria is not working and if that happens well you're gonna start losing corals you're gonna have bad water chemistry it's gonna start really chewing away at alkalinity and you think it's coral growth but it's not it's actually you know the bad bacteria god I wish I could remember the name right now that's actually utilizing the alkalinity in the water along with phosphates and on top of that people are always worried about oh I'm gonna have uh, Jay I'm gonna have all these problems with bacteria I'm gonna have all these problems with algae and I'm gonna have all these problems with you know my tanks gonna look like a, a, a planted freshwater tank that's not the case no matter what you do I don't care who you are I don't care how long you've been reefing algae is an issue you have to deal with throughout the hobby so whether it's dinos whether it's you name it red slime uh, all algaes are formed in a reef aquarium and keep in mind we keep these things in a small box so big things happen fast so you got to stay on top of your game and you got to know how to treat each one it's not about taking care of the reef the coral it's more or less taking about your water and once you can figure that out and you know exactly how to deal with different algae outbreaks you won't have as much rush rush now I am big on automation. I run everything Apex. I mean everything, everything from fish feeding to coral liquid feeding to my water changes to stuff like that. Everything is done through my Apex. It makes it easier. I don't have to do the labor. I got a lot of other things going on in my life. I'm very uh, happy to be able to afford things like that. But you can still do it the other way. You know, changing water every other week. Um, making sure your stuff is good but remember the base of your aquarium the cycle the start of it is where it all begins it's just like anything else if you don't have a good foundation it's gonna fall apart later so I hope you guys appreciate kind of a little bit of my knowledge and time because it's taken me a long time to get here and yeah so thank you YouTube I hope you guys like it I'll see you later